Thank you. Uh, Dale Livingston. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Good to see everybody here. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Bridgeville Greater Area Alliance. Um, we spent, we just celebrated two years being chartered, uh, Lions Club chartered here in Bridgeville. Um, we cover the areas of, of Bridgeville, Collier, Heidelberg, and South Fayette. And, um, I just want to kind of give you guys a little update on some of the things that we've done the past year. Um, <clears throat> over the last year, um, over the last two years actually, um, we've provided, uh, we donated automatic defibrillators to the police department. Um, we donated smoke detectors for, to the fire department to give away um, to people in need. Um, we provided eyeglasses for people in need. There's been several requests for people that um, didn't have insurance that, that needed eye care um, that, that the lion stepped up and, and took care of. Um, we helped out with flood relief, and Dan's going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, this year, we did our second annual um, FOSTA fundraiser. Um, we doubled our proceeds from the year before. Very successful. Thank you to the community, the business owners here in town and, and surrounding community. Um, it's just been a wonderful um, organization, a wonderful thing to do. Um, you know, the organization is 23, 23 individuals and serving the community very well. Um, we're always looking for uh, new um, community service-minded individuals. Uh, if anybody's will, you know, looking to, to um, get involved, I've got some information here. I want to just take one pass it on and, and keep it in mind if you run into people that are or things we're in the process of putting some new posters up around town um, with contact information. So, um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dan to talk and discuss the flooding yep. relief issue. Um, the, uh, yeah, the appeal to have people help and join us would be is fantastic. Uh, you know, they, they you can have 50 members and maybe half of them are pretty active, and the rest of them are there to support a little bit. So the more members we get, the more contribution we can do to the community. So all of you out there, uh, we will have posts all over the place asking for you to come in and, and spend a, one meeting with us and decide if you uh, uh, would like to join. Uh, but there's a lot of people dedicated to really helping out. So I do want to spend just a few moments talking about kind of a progress as well as a report on what's been going on behind the scenes. Uh, and so, as we all know, June 20th, uh, was a horrendous flood. Uh, this area has had a number of floods that you might say are irritating, but that was horrendous. Uh, and it's taken quite a while to recover, and there's still some homes still trying to recover. You know, the, the interesting thing, and I've kind of titled this report, uh, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, uh, because that's what happened immediately. Uh, not only did the first responders who were over there uh, come charging in to help enforce uh, and bring all of the resources available to help people. But there were volunteers pouring into those streets over the next few days. From the churches particularly, uh, the, the flood relief that was given by just people donating things, and then the funds that were raised by the GoFundMe page and, and the volunteer fire department doing, and the EMS doing all kinds of, of projects, $80,000. I know you all know that number. But it's just uh, flabbergasting to me. Behind the scenes, uh, the Lions came along. We, we gave $1,000 to the immediate flood relief. But we had the, the opportunity to get funds from uh, the Lions Club's International Foundation, uh, which is an international foundation that will provide pretty immediate funding. The problem was we weren't out there in the streets quickly enough to get a real scope on how much it was. By the time we got enough information together to go for that grant, we were only able to get $10,500 uh, versus the $20,000 we could have gotten. So one of the things that we learned from that is we need to find some way to get in touch with people when there's, when there's real relief starting to go on. But that $10,500, thanks to the Bridgeville United Methodist Church and the Crossroads United Methodist Church, 
uh, who provided all kinds of people to go onto Baldwin Street and McLaughlin Run and repair houses, 20 houses. We were able to take that $10,000 and refund what they had already purchased, and then fund two houses that had to have furnaces replaced. Uh, and we were not only those furnaces, by the way, Carrier gave those furnaces, bought, uh, donated those. We then paid the people who had to install those to do the duct work and all the other things that had to be done. So we're really proud to be partners in what happened there. Uh, we kind of say to ourselves, we could have done more. Uh, and so I'm going to hand you all copies of this progress report. But uh, so we, it took us until October 31st to get that grant. A lot of people struggled and borrowed money and did all kinds of things to get their house back up. If we could have gotten that money sooner, we think we could have helped a lot more people. Uh, so, and I think it's true too. Uh, it, it's so difficult uh, to, to really get a sense of 170 some homes and businesses. Who needs what? And how quickly do you need it? And who's got themselves pretty well covered and who doesn't? How do you really get out there and find that out? So one of the things from lessons learned uh, that we have, and I'm certainly not an expert in this area, but we learned that if, if it could somehow, I mean, 911 calls are flying in, you know where the flooding is, you're out there right away. If there were some way that the borough and the volunteers could get instant response, you know. To coordinate. Yeah, exactly, a uh, coordinated effort. Uh, so one of the things we'd like to suggest is that Possibly uh, a, a plan could be put together. The Lions Club would love to be part of that. I know the uh, United Methodist Church, the Bridgeville Church, and the Crossroads would be very happy, and there are other churches that probably would be. If we could just form a community planning committee for first response. Now I'm reading back there some things that are going to help in the long term. But we know that it's going to take a little longer for that, and there are going to be floods. There are going to be other things that happen in this community that if we have a first uh, immediate response where there is already a planned process in place, we might be able to respond more quickly. One of the things we can also do is Lions uh, Clubs International Foundation has a fund of $10,000 for preparedness planning. And there are all kinds of things, everything from training, uh, everything from just having a storage area where there are already immediate things that are ready for relief, as well as the people who are needing to be getting out there and doing the things to collect all the information. So I'm going to drop this off, let you know that we are ready and willing to help out with that. I've also got a couple copies of the actual grant. I'll just give you what that looks like. I mean, we'd be the ones to apply for the grant if that is something that the council and management decides uh, you would like to be able to participate in. So if you want to pass one of those around. And I'm going to this one, give that to you. And uh, a couple copies, just so that there's a little description of what this grant is all about. Are there any questions, anything? Okay, well thank you very much.